Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will be starting our calculator program. We will begin with a relatively simple implementation and gradually learn new things that we can use to improve it. But let's not waste time with talking. Let's get to it. In our first implementation we are going to ask the user to enter two numbers and an operand. That way we can determine the operation he wants to do and produce the desired result. We are going to create the necessary variables first. These are the variables that we are going to use for our operations. We are going to use a character to store the operator because we are only going to need one single symbol in order to determine what we want to do. The last thing we are going to need is of course the scanner. And just like last time, we need to import it. Now that we are ready to go, let's implement the logic. First of all, we need to tell the user what he needs to do. We are going to ask the user to put in his first number. Notice that I used system out print instead of print line this time. This will allow the user to type in his input right next to the prompt. It just looks nicer. Then we are going to read in the number. We are going to use our scanner instance, which we called input, to store the next integer into number 1. Next thing we are going to do is ask for the desired operation. This time it gets a little bit trickier. The scanner cannot obtain single characters. It doesn't have a next character method. And just using next like this, would result in an error. This is because the next method returns us a string and we cannot convert from a string to a character. What we can do however is extract characters from a string. Here's what I mean. We are creating a string called user input and store the token inside. And then we will extract the character doing this. Since the string is a class, it also comes with methods. And one of those methods is car at. This allows us to take the string that uses the method, in this case user input, and extract the character that we specify, in this case 0. Because again, just like with arrays, we start counting at 0. In actuality, strings are an array of characters. Now we could execute this operation in a single step. Instead of creating a separate string variable, we could just do this. As you know, the next method gives us a string. However, we are only interested in the first character. So what we can do is the following. Instead of taking the time and storing the string in a separate variable, we just take the string directly and invoke the car at method on it. What you're seeing in this space right here that I've marked is nothing else than a string. If you didn't understand it, feel free to ask and I will try to elaborate on this. Anyway, now it's time to ask for the second number. Again remove the line. Since that's what ln stands for if I hadn't mentioned it before, print ln prints a whole line and then does the same thing as pressing the enter button, like this. At this point, we are done with the user. We've gotten all the data we need and now it's time to process it. So first of all, we are going to need to think about what we're going to do. We know that we have to perform a specific operation depending on what's inside of operator. 
And for now, we want to limit our calculator to basic arithmetic only. So we're going to add, subtract, multiply and divide. Those are four different situations that we need to differentiate. We could go and use if statements, but that would quickly become messy, especially if we're going to add more functionality later on. A better alternative would be the switch statement. The variable in question is of course the operator. If the user puts in the plus sign, he obviously wants to add the two numbers together. So our result would be number 1 plus number 2. Don't forget to break, there we go. And that's all the cases that we need to take care of. And now it's time to print out the result. Now we could be a bit fancy and do this. We are going to print out the values that we used for the calculation and then present the result to the user. What I did here is using an empty string. If I hadn't done this, the program would add number 1, operator and number 2 together and printed that result in the console. We want to treat them as strings though and present their separate values. So let's have a go at our program. Enter your first number, let's go with 8. Our operator is going to be plus. And our second number is going to be 17. And fair enough, 8 plus 17 is indeed 25. Now, just to show you what I meant with the string representation, I'm going to remove this. Let's run the program again. 8 plus 17, 68 equals 25. Wrap your head around that. This is because now number 1, operator and number 2 all get added together. You might be wondering how that works, since operator is actually just a character. Well, with characters, you have the option to represent them using ASCII code. So if we're doing some quick math here, 68 minus 25 would be 43. So the ASCII code for the plus sign would be 43. Just if you were interested, uh, don't let it confuse you. We will probably talk about that in the future. So let's add this back here and do some more testing with our program. Just because it ran once flawlessly doesn't mean it's perfect. Let's say we want to divide 14 by 3. 14 divided by 3 is 4. Well that's not true, even I know that, so obviously here's room for improvement. Let's take a look at our variables. Well, the error is right there. The data type we chose for them is integer. Now I don't think there are many calculators around that just use integers for their operations. So let's go ahead and change them to doubles. And if you run this again, 14 divided by 3, sure enough we get the correct result. If we hadn't changed those variables to doubles, we also wouldn't have been able to use any floating point values. Now this seems like a nice enough program, but it's far from perfect. Check this out. Let's say we mess around a little, and instead of putting in a number, we are wreaking some havoc and put in a letter. And sure enough, we will get our old input mismatch exception. Why? Because we tried to store a string inside of an integer, and we learned last time that doesn't work. So we need to find a way to prevent the user from typing in illegal characters. And there are a few ways of going about this. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way of solving this problem. Before we're going into the code and try fixing the problem, we need to ask ourselves, what do we want to do? If the user makes illegal input, we still want him to be able to use the program. So if he gave us a value that we can't use, we need to ask him again. And this is easily achieved using a while loop. So first we're going to prompt him to enter his first number. And then we need to check whether or not we got a double value. He 
Using the method has next double, we can check whether or not the next token is actually a double value. And this, of course, evaluates to a Boolean expression. So we can use this as a condition. What's interesting about this method is that when we haven't done any input before, it has the same effect as next double. So if there aren't any tokens in our input, has next double is also going to prompt the user to type in a value. And I just noticed down here, it shouldn't be next int, it should be next double. Same down here. There we go. So first of all, we're going to prompt him to enter his first number. Then this method gets called, which waits for the user to type in a value. And if that value is not a double, if it is false, we need to tell the user that he did something wrong. We will tell him that the input was invalid, but that alone is not enough to prevent the error. Because at this point, if you didn't type in a value, this boolean expression right here would always evaluate to false. And this means that we would go into an infinite while loop and we would print out this message a lot of times. So what we need to do is tell our scanner that he needs to discard the current token. Here's how we do it. We're using the next line method of our scanner. And you will notice that we don't store this line in any variable. This is a valid action. It will take the token that the scanner is at and destroy it, since we're not providing a container to store it in. So now our scanner is empty again, and we can ask again whether or not we have a next double. So this process gets repeated until eventually the user types in a double value. Once he does, this method right here will return true and we will break out of the while loop. And now, since we've assured that the next token is in fact a double, we can freely store it in number one. With the operator it gets a bit more tricky because we're actually asking for strings. And also we need to differentiate four different cases, because we're only interested in actual operators. The thought process behind it is the same. We just need to specify the condition a little more. This makes actually for a good situation to make a do while loop. So we're storing the first character into operator like usual. And if the operator doesn't match any of these signs, we will repeat this process until we get one of our operators. Remember, using a double pipe like this is the logical OR operator. Now, for number two, we can just go and copy and paste this. The concept is exactly the same like before. Now let's see if this actually works. Enter your first number. We're just going to go with 10 times 15. And I made a mistake somewhere. Great. Let me go ahead and find the error. Ah yes, I figured it out. Instead of using the logical OR operator, of course we need to use the logical AND operator. Because our variable can only have one state at a time, when we use the OR operator like we did before, and we actually entered the plus sign, this right here would still evaluate to false, because even though this right here was true, it wasn't a minus sign, it wasn't a multiply sign, and it wasn't a division sign. With the AND operator, all of these cases must be false in order for the whole expression to be false. I tend to mix this up a lot for some reason, I don't know why. So let's go ahead and try this again. 10 times 15 is indeed 150. Now let's try entering a letter. First number is T. Invalid input. Only numbers are allowed. Oh, well, let's try K. Invalid input. Okay, fine. 15. Operator is gonna be G. 
Well, we forgot to print out an error message, but it should still work. If I enter a minus sign right now, right, we get to enter a second number. Um, D, invalid input. But we're actually getting this error message two times in a row. I'm not quite sure why that is. And now we're only getting it once. I think it has to do with the operator right here. Because I tried to fool the system by entering a G, it printed out this message two times because we never got rid of G. Up here and down here, we erased the token using next line, but we never did it here. So this is likely the reason for that. Anyway, let's try entering a number. 100 and 15 minus 100 are indeed minus 85. Just now, we have written our real first program. It actually does something useful. Sure, it's not the best, but hey, we're only starting out. Over the course of the next few tutorials, we will learn how to improve our calculator even more and add more functionality to it. But this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. See you next time!